my name is Pastor Amber Silver. We are pastors in Toronto. And our church name is Welcome Holy Spirit. Amen. I love the Holy Spirit. I love to worship. And uh, we are from Toronto. But our background is Congo, Africa. Um, I used to live in Virginia before. In Leesburg, I was sharing with Pastor that when I came to the North America, Virginia was the first state I was received. I was pastoring a church in Leesburg, and I was a barber. <laughs> so I used to cut hair, evangelize, and then go pray all night in the church. Amen. Now God has led us to Toronto. That's where we are. We are living now. That's our home. We are Canadian, but uh, we are children of God, and that's the most important. Yeah. Help me to welcome my wife, my first lady. Yeah. Her name is Jamima Fatuma. Yeah. Amen. We came together. We have our daughter, Princess. She, she likes to film. <laughs> she was recording everything for people in Canada. And I have my son, Prince. Stand up, Blessing. His name is Prince Blessing. And she's Princess Deborah. Amen. So I want us to worship. Uh, Pastor put me into a situation where I think I have to worship. <laughs> so my wife will come forth and we are going to sing maybe one song. I didn't know, I don't know how much time you gave me today. Really? <laughs> it's a very dangerous thing to give a microphone to a pastor. You need to give him some time. But we are guided by the Holy Spirit. Please come, Mama, come. Amen. I like this, you know. Stairs here, I see every lady coming. They have to hold her by hand, so I'm holding you. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we're going to sing that song, You Are Holy. I, I feel the presence of God here. I feel the glory of God in the house. When the praises go high, he comes down. I want him to take control of this moment. Maybe I didn't come for all of you. Maybe I came for one person. And I want to make sure that as we are going to Toronto, let that person receive the touch of the Holy Spirit. Why don't we lift up our hand to the throne of God? And tell him how holy he is. The book of Revelation chapter 5. The Bible says. Angels shout holy. Holy. Holy is. The Lord that was. That is. That is to come. The Bible says the 24 elders. Lay down their crowns before his feet. And the worshiper. We are laying down our crown this morning. Jehovah. To say that you are holy in this place. You are holy, King of glory. You are holy, O oh Adonai. Your name is Elohim. Your name is El Elyon. You are the Lord Most High. You know our end before our beginning. You are the lily of the valley. You are the lion of the tribe of Judah. You are the prince of peace. We cherish your presence this morning. We cherish your glory in this place. You are mighty in this place, Jesus. O Rabba Shata Laba Ia Laba Santa Lebro. O Rama Kata Laba Sea Laba Shia. Merebo Sata La Kanda Lebo Shia Laba Baba. Father, thank you for opening heaven here. O Rabba Shia Laba Baba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord God Almighty reign. Hallelujah.
are holy. Oh, my God. 
up your hand, church. Let us worship him. Listen, say with me. You 
melody is so powerful. I feel the atmosphere is already charged. I love to worship, and I can worship the whole day here. But I think I need to share the word of God. Last night when I was praying uh, in our hotel room, I said, Lord, I don't want to come with my agenda here. I want your agenda to be fulfilled in this church. I saw in a vision at night that God is going to heal people here. There's a woman. I saw a particular woman who have pain around this area at the back and it's been bothering you a lot. If you are here, I think this is the moment. I just want to release that word of healing on you. I want us to do something and I feel like it's very important. There is power in your declaration. You know, you can put a demand on the word of God and things begin to happen. I'm in Uganda. I went to minister there and uh, Africa is full of witchcraft and somebody was trying to bewitch me and I stand up at the pulpit man of God I feel like something is cutting my intestine I can't move, I can't speak and I said Lord I took the microphone I was sweating and my host, the pastor was wondering what's wrong and then I just shout loud, Jesus Oh, Rasha Labrosia. The moment they shout the name of Jesus, I saw like 10 people falling down at the back and coming like snakes. Oh, the glory is here. All over the floor. And then I say to the whole church, I think I understand what is going on. The Bible says, well, two or three are gathering in my name. I'm in the midst of that. It says something very powerful. It says if they are in accordance. That means if they are speaking the same thing. Same language. So I told the church, let us shout the name of Jesus in this place. Because if there is any power, any demonic activity, today, because of the name of Jesus, they must cut her in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to shout the name of Jesus loud in this place. And I'm telling you the glory is going to fall in this room. I feel it already. I feel the anointing. That's why I don't even know how I'm going to preach my message. But I don't really care about what I prepared. I think this is what the Lord wants right now. Lift up your hands wherever you are. And just shout loud the name of Jesus Christ. Let's go together. One, two, three. Jesus! And every power of witchcraft shall bow down before the name of Jesus. I say every principalities of the city, every dominion and rulers of that death shall bow down before the name of Jesus. We say Jesus. Saturate this room, Lord. Saturate this room, Adonai. As you are shouting the name of Jesus, I decree that the chains are broken in the name of Jesus. Oh, I decree that the anointing of the Holy Spirit is setting you free tonight in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. Let the anointing begin to flow on you now. Oh, Rabba Shanda Rabba Sia. Ke Rabba Baba Basika Rabba. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Sing, church. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be thy name, Lord. 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 H
Shout hallelujah. Praise be the name of Jesus. Wow, it's so sweet to be in his presence. We are going to read the word of God. I have four things to share with you today. And then we're going to leave this place. Hallelujah. Anybody blessed? Let me hear you shout hallelujah for the Lord. This morning I want to talk about four keys for God intervention. Four keys for God interventions. And I'm going to read um, the main verse we're going to read is in the book of Acts chapter 12 from verse 5. If it's okay, we can stand up to honor the word of God if you are able to. Amen. Hallelujah. Those who can, if you are sick, I understand. But I pray that the Lord heals you in Jesus' name. Amen. We read from verse number 5. The Bible says, Thank you, Holy Spirit. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. Somebody say, but the church was earnestly praying. Say it again, but the church was earnestly praying for him. The night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and sentries stood guard at the entrance. Verse number 7. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared and light shone in the cell. This morning, I don't know what kind of prison or cell you are in, but there is God intervention here angels are in this room and your chains will fall in the name of Jesus. Oh, I love you, Lord. Verse number eight. Then the angel said to him, put your cloth and sandals and Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. And the angel told him, verse number nine, Peter followed him out of the prison but he had no idea that what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. Like some of you really are thinking that it's not reality, but it's reality. Or people who knew you last year will be so shocked. They'll be saying like, what happened to Sister Dorothy? What happened to Sister Anne? What happened to Brother Michael and Brother John? It will be the doing of the law. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at your neighbor and say, it's not a vision. It's reality. They passed the first gate and the second guard and came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself. Electronic doors happened even in the realm of the spirit. Somebody. <laughs> I don't know if you read the Bible like I do. This door just open and let your doors open this morning in the name of Jesus. It opened for them by itself. Wow. Oh, God is amazing. Praise God. Hallelujah. Those were chains and they were, you know, soldiers and centurions. But when the presence of God is involved in someone's life, those that will seem impossible begin to open by themselves. Oh, Rashata. It's not going to be by power, nor by might, but it's going to be by the Spirit of the Lord. Says the Lord Almighty. He 
said, Oh mountain, who are you before Zerubbabel? The Lord shall put you to naught. This morning, every mountain ahead of you shall be completely put to naught in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you for your glory, Lord. And the Bible says, Suddenly, the angel left him. And then Peter came to himself and said, Now I know without doubt that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were hoping would happen. Let the church clap for the word. Amen. Please sit down. Please sit down. I want to teach on um, this message that I call Four Keys for God intervention because I, I'm writing a book on, a book on prayer and uh, this is one of the topics that I developed and uh, I believe that um, I'm going to use this part of my book to talk to somebody this afternoon for the glory of God. Amen. Um, I believe that uh, God never does anything by coincidence. When he brings his word, it's for a reason. You see, the Bible says whatsoever you bind on earth shall be what? Bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be what? Loose. So there are four scenarios that happen. It's either um, you bind on earth, but in the realm of the spirit, there is resistance. Amen? That's scenario number one. Remember, Daniel was praying for 21 days. His prayer was supposed to be answered from day number one. But there were princes and rulers of darkness, prince of Persia, that were fighting against the prayer of Daniel. Scenario number two is either you are binding on earth, but your heart is not in it, so God has already answered, but you don't receive because your heart is not ready to receive. Amen? So there are things that God has already released for you, but if you don't have faith, it's impossible to receive them. Now, scenario number three, it's either um, heaven and earth. I've already responded, but you are not just at the right place. You are waiting for the process of God. There are things that God will do when he makes sure you are already prepared. Some blessings come in the life of somebody. If you are not prepared, they will destroy you. I always say that the blessings of the Lord are costly and they can be heavier. The anointing of the Holy Spirit can also be heavy on someone. And if you don't know how to manage the anointing, the anointing can kill you. Oh, you didn't say amen. And the scenario number four is that when you loose and bind, your heart is ready to receive and heaven has already responded. I pray this morning that as I'm releasing this word, your heart is ready to receive in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say glory to God. Glory to God. There are three channels that the enemy uses to attack people. Number one is the covenant. Certain people are loose and, or they are bind because of evil covenant. It may be covenant from blood, covenant from family, generational curses. The enemy can put a demand on those covenant to hinder your life. Number two, the enemy can use disobedience. Partial obedience is disobedience. When God is asking you to pray and fast, you don't fast because you say, I will do it next time. It's disobedience. God can ask you to come and serve in his house, but because you don't like sister so and so, you disobey and you miss your blessing. Oh, am I talking to somebody? And number three, ignorance. Somebody say ignorance. My people perish for what? Lack of knowledge. Okay, it's not something that God will tolerate for his people to be ignorant of the promises of God. There are things that we don't receive in prayer because we are ignorant of what the Bible says about us. We are ignorant about what the scripture says about us. And so when you pray, your prayer is just so, uh, 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 I'll say a prayer without material, without 
a, 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 something to back it up. Amen. You know, God is a king at the same time he's a judge. And so when you stand before every judge, you need some evidence. You need something that you will use so that it will back up whatever claims you are bringing to the king. So every time when we come in the presence of God, he expects us to be knowledgeable of what the Bible says about us. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. But there are also three levels where the power of God can visit people. Number one, the power of God can visit you on a personal encounter, personal level. That means you develop your personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. Am I teaching this Sunday? There are some people who depend on the pastor. It's okay. But listen to me. The Bible says that he can do exceedingly abundantly and above all things. Amen. And that is according to the power within you. So in you, there is power there is the anointing of God that can open doors that you don't need to call pastor at 3 a.m. because you had a bad dream. You can wake up and say, devil, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus because the power that works within you is at work. Personal relationship with God. Number two, the presence of God can also work with you when you walk in obedience to the principles of the kingdom. The dimensions of God power works with people who are obedient. Some of you, God will give you a word. Start a business. You need to be obedient. Don't begin to ask yourself questions. Go with the little power you have, Gideon. He said, even if you are the youngest of the tribe of Manasseh, when I look at you, I see a mighty man of valor. I see a mighty woman of valor. Go with a little power. Somebody shout obedience. You know, certain things, they come once. And if you miss them, you miss them forever. Or if you miss them, it takes time to get them again. Are you with me, somebody? And number three, the level where God power will work is covenant or alliances with him. Men and women that God has released in your life. For instance, when we are first lady and apostle Harry here, we know that God has anointed them. You can tap to the grace that is upon the man of God, that is upon the woman of God. That covenant you have can also begin to flow. The Bible says that, and he anoint my head and the cup overflow. Amen. The anointing is coming from Aaron's head all the way to his beard, and it goes all over the body. We are the body of Christ. And when the anointing begins to flow, it starts from the leader of the church, the leader of the vision, and the anointing is contagious. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, it's contagious. Oh yes, if God has visited the bishop, guess who's next? You are next. Because the anointing is for the house. And when it flows here, there's a reason why it's flowing here. Oh, you're not trusting God. The anointing can flow here. Man of God, can I just say this as a prophecy? The million dollars anointing can flow here. Not only for the bishop, but for all of you here. Oh. Shout hallelujah. How many people want to receive that anointing? Let me see your hand. Oh, shout hallelujah. Oh, God is able. We were singing that song, right? I said, God is able to do just what he says he will do. I like your fingers. You are so anointed. All oh, glory to God. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up. He's able. God is able to do just what he says he will do. He's gonna fulfill. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Oh, don't give up on God. Don't give up on God Cause he won't give up He's able Oh hallelujah
million dollars anointing. That's where I was talking about. I didn't forget. I receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. I have come to change the story of this church. Oh yes. I know who works with me. I know the power of the word of God. And I decree it on your million dollars anointing. At the back there, I don't hear your amen. Let me hear a great amen. amen. Oh, yes. God is able. God is able. I was telling pastor when I, leave, I left the U.S. to Canada, I only had $50. Today, by the grace of God, what we are able to achieve, we, 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 we just don't comprehend. God has done beyond our expectation. Beyond our expectation. Sometimes it sounds like arrogance, but I'm going to be arrogant against the devil because he has done great things for me. You know, it's good when you are telling people not stories that you read, but your own personal experience. I can tell you that Jesus is faithful. I can tell you that Jesus can bless. I can tell you that Jesus can change your life. Oh, somebody shout out, say, in the name of Jesus. From $50 and today we do million dollars project. Million dollars project. Million dollars project. He's able to change life, precious people. I don't believe in that gospel that says that you know you, you are children of God. No. I don't believe that poverty is the will of God. I believe that when God comes in your life, the presence of God must make you successful. You agree with me somebody? I'm not saying that you will never fail. It can happen that you fail. But continue. Because as you continue, God will bring the favor. Remember Joseph? He was in the house of Potiphar, a slave. But the Bible says Potiphar was blessed because of the anointing of God upon Joseph. Oh, hallelujah. It's possible that you are into a situation where you think that it's over. But God is saying he's able. He's able to change that situation. Is able to bring that breakthrough. Is able, is able to change the doctor's report. Is able, is able. Whose report are you going to believe? Rabba Kata Labasea. Whose report are you going to believe? This God is able. And so the first key for God intervention is prayer. Somebody say with me, prayer. Say aloud, prayer. The Bible says that Peter, who was the head of the apostle, when Jesus was raptured, he went to heaven. The Bible says Peter was arrested because they didn't like them preaching about the resurrected Jesus. And the Bible says that Peter was sleeping, but the church was praying, somebody. The church was praying. So one, 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 one uh, weapon of God is what I call the weapon of prayer. A church that neglects prayer is a dead church. But a church that is a prayerful church, they are a prevailing church. Nothing will be impossible to you. You see, you can cry day and night, but nothing will happen. But when you involve prayer to your tears, when you involve prayer to your tears, there is a God who understands more the tears that are coming through prayer. He heard the tears. Of the mother Agar, the mother of uh, 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 the, the slave of Abraham with a son in the wilderness. He had the tears of the son who was under the tree because prayer can change things. Amen? Prayer as a way to release arrows of God. I'm going to give you this scripture for the second of time. Psalms chapter 18 verse 14. Somebody say God has arrows. Arrows. I'm talking about the arrows. God has arrows. You read the book of Psalms that says that, and um, the, you, you will, it says, uh, um, thou shall not be uh, uh, smitten by the arrows that flies by the day. Understand me, I speak French, so I'm getting things from French to English, amen. Thou shall not be smitten by the arrows that flies by the day. So the enemy has arrows. Every time when the enemy wants to attack somebody, it's linked arrows. Arrows of sickness, arrows of hindrances, arrows of confusion, depression. He can send them so that he can frustrate your life. 
But when you read the book of Psalms chapter 18 verse 14, I came to realize that God also has horrors. Come on somebody. He said with great, he said he shot his arrows and scatter the enemy. You see? He said with great bolt of lightning he rooted them. You hear this somebody? That when you are praying what you do actually you are dispatching angels. Angels of war to begin to shut arrows at your enemies. Shut arrows at the situations you are going through. Oh, may God begin to shut arrows in the camp of the enemy this afternoon. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Number two, you need to engage in praise with understanding. I call it praise with faith. The second way that God will intervene in your prayer is when you begin to engage in praise. Engage in praise. You know, I always say that when you praise God, you praise him for what he has done for you. You've been looking for marriage. God has given you that husband. You've been looking for children. God has given you those children. You've been looking for a beautiful place to worship. God has given you this place. Maybe you've been looking for a house. God has blessed you with that house. So when you come in prayer, you praise him for what you already received. You give him praise. You say, Father, I thank you because you removed my shame. Hallelujah. But there is also what I call thanking God in advance. Oh, somebody didn't hear me this afternoon. Thanking God in advance. That's when worship comes in the game. You remember this woman, the Syrophoenician woman? She has a daughter who is extremely sick. She comes and she heard about Jesus passing. She said, Lord, please heal my daughter. She has a sickness. And look at Jesus. By the way, when, the, when I see the reactions of Jesus... Sometimes I said, oh my God, this was really rude. But he's our Lord, so he can't be rude. <laughs> he said to this woman, I can't give bread that is supposed to be given to children to dogs. Come on, somebody. Can we be realistic? You are whole, holy holistic here. Come on. Jesus technically called this woman a dog. Is there any dog in this? <laughs> We are redeemed by the blood of Jesus. So we are covered with his glory and magnificence. But Jesus said, I can't give food of children to the dogs. But this woman changed her narrative. She started praising Jesus in advance. She said, Lord, even those can eat from the table of the kings. Technically, she's saying, Lord, all I need is a little cramp of your glory. And my story will change. You see, the problem is sometimes we don't receive from God because we don't know how to receive. One way to receive from the Lord is begin to praise him in advance. Praise him in advance. You are here, you are sitting down, and maybe you have that situation where you are wondering, Lord, where am I going to get help? God is saying, begin to worship me and praise me in advance. All you need is a little crumbs of the glory of God and your story will change in the name of Jesus. Oh, your prayer must be answered after this service in the name of Jesus. Thanksgiving is very important. You thank God whether things are okay or whether things are not okay. When G God was giving instructions to Moses to prepare a cake for sacrificial offerings, he said to Moses, you will prepare a cake with yeast. He said, without yeast, with oil on top. And then he said on another verse, prepare a cake with yeast and oil on top. So yeast usually represents bad news. It represents sin. Yeast represents things that can decay, can, you know, mess up your cake. And then on the other side, he's talking about Moses do a bread without yeast. So a bread without yeast means that you thank God for the good things. A cake represents the goodness of the Lord. He said he renew his goodness every morning. So you can praise God for his goodness. But there is time God will allow yeast to come in your cake. And to bring bad news sometime. You are receiving a bad news and you are fasting. You are receiving a bad news in a moment where you thought, I'm fasting and praying everything should be okay. God allow yeast to come. Do you know why God allow yeast to come? So that we can praise him whether it is in a good or bad season. Am I talking to somebody? There are situations that are just waiting for you. In fact, you know what? The devil knows that when you are going through tough situations, it's hard to praise. It's hard to worship. 
But what the Lord is asking of you in prayer, forget about those bills, forget about what the lawyer said, or forget about whatever you are going through. Put that worship and begin to say, You are holy, holy, high Lord God, Almighty. What is the Lamb? What is the Lamb? What is the Lamb? You are holy, you are holy, holy God. Are you Logan? Are you Logan? Oh, my. What is the Lamb? What is the Lamb? What is the Lamb? What is the Lamb? Amen. Engage in worship with understanding. Sometimes I'll take my wallet, my credit card, my visa, all the letters that are coming to me, and I put there, and I stand up on top of them. I say, Lord, you are holy. I don't really care about what these things are telling me. All I know, you are holy, and you are able in my situation. Your worship will move God from his throne. And guess when he comes where you are? No sickness will prevail. No poverty will prevail. Even if it's a curse from your family, it went from one generation to another. But when it comes on you, the story changes. Because you are worshipping with understanding. Somebody say, praise the Lord. David says in Psalm 67 verse 3, he said, may the people praise you, God. May all the people praise you. Psalms 22 verse 3, he said, but thou art holy. All thou inhabited the praises of Israel. Today, I want to rebuke every depression in the name of Jesus Christ. Depression is the absence of joy. And if you are here, you don't have joy. I command joy to locate you in the name of Jesus Christ. Every spirit that is taking your joy away. Depression, go in the name of Jesus Christ. You don't have to praise God when everything is alright, somebody. Thanksgiving is when your doors is open, but begin to worship him. Even where you are feeling like you are disgraced, there is a God who comes when you worship him. Somebody shout hallelujah. In the book of Zechariah chapter 3 verse 14, the Bible says, Sing, O daughters of Zion, shout, O Israel. It says, Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughters of Jerusalem. He said, the Lord thy God is in the midst of his mighty and he will save you. He will rejoice over thee with joy and he will rest his love. Look at this. He said, he will joy over thee with singing. Power in singing. He said, at the time will I bring you again, even in the time that I gather you, for I will make you a name. A praise among all people of the earth when I'm turned back your captivity. Before your eyes, says the law. I remember a king, Saul. He was demon-possessed man of God. But the Bible says he called the magicians of the city to rebuke the evil spirit. Mm, nothing happened when they tried. But there was a son of God who was anointed with the power of singing. His name is David. The power of God came over David in the bush and David was writing psalms for the glory of God. But David didn't know that he was writing psalms to set a king free. The Bible says that they called David and he started playing the up. That's why I like to play the keyboard because certain sound release the atmosphere of the Holy Ghost in the house. You understand now why I say play the keyboard? Because music has power to either call spirits or cast out the spirit. Somebody shout hallelujah. We sometimes don't know the importance of praise and worship, but praise and worship actually allow the power of God to come and saturate the room because there is power in singing. He said, I will rejoice over thee and I will rejoice over thy singing. There is power in this room, somebody. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I feel the healing power, the power of deliverance, the power to break the chain. There is power in 
the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. Look at your neighbor say, I see the chain falling. 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 Oh, I see the chain falling. I see the chain falling. Anointing of God is increasing in this room as we worship. The prophetic grace is here. Last night I was praying and I saw angels coming in this area. And they surrounded the church. And the Lord started showing me faces of people that I'm seeing here in this room. His glory is in this room. Ora shata la basia. I say that she fully. Say church. I say that she fully. I say that she fully. I'm going to try to finish. Key number three for God intervention. I call it a seed of faith. A seed of faith. Listen, I know there is a lot of manipulation with the gospel of money. I call it the gospel of money. Because today we have preachers. When they come to preach, we have to discuss about the honor honorarium. Because they want to focus on their belly instead of the souls. Are you listening to me? And so when they preach you, they abuse with the word of God. They abuse. But listen to me, church. The fact that there are people who abuse with this does not cancel the principle of the kingdom. Seed in your hand can create a destiny that can surprise you. The Bible says that if you give, you shall receive. It's a divine principle. Even if you are not Christian, if you give, you shall. Oh, I don't hear you, church. Christian don't like when pastor talk about money. I'm going to talk about money today because I want you to be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody say, if I give, I shall. Receive. Receive. Because it's a divine principle. You don't, you, don't, you don't need to speak in tongues to receive. If you give, if you are a giver, God blesses you. It's a divine principle. That cannot change. You see, there are certain things that we receive by the grace of God. Salvation, we receive it by the grace. We receive Jesus by the grace. We are going to heaven by the grace of God. It's not your own merit or your own effort. These are laws and principles of the kingdom. When you abide by them, you will see them coming to pass. Same with the seed. Amen? Same with the seed. Because the Bible says, by faith, able sword. He saw, he gave to God the best of himself. Seed offerings. When a word like this is being released and the Holy Spirit puts something in your heart, don't wait. Do it by faith. Because certain offering will speak on your behalf. Cain came and killed Abel and the Lord remembered Abel. Why? Because Abel was giving with his heart. And he said, where is your brother? Because his blood is crying. Seed can cry before you, before the Lord, for your sake. It can change the story of your family. It can change your own destinies. Some of you are asking God to intervene in your life, to answer your prayer. In the matter of finances, it's about giving and receiving. You can fast for 40 days. If you don't learn how to give when God says so, nothing will happen. Oh yes, I'm teaching the kingdom of God. When you fast and pray, you can rebuke demons. 
you can rebuke sickness you can you can be you can you, you can you can do a lot of good stuff but when it comes to the finances and certain curse to break out of your life learn to give learn to give psalms chapter 126 the bible says when the lord brought back the captives from zion we were like men who dreamed. Our mouth were filled with laughter. Our tongue with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. He has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, our Lord, as the streams in the south. Certain life situations are captivities. You see, it's funny sometimes when I'm in the United States and I work and I see homeless people. I thought that was just for Africa. <laughs> I thought that was just for my place. You know, I come in a place where I will share my testimony briefly and then I'm going to go finish the message. I come in a place where there is a lot of uh, war. My country, Congo, you know, and uh, we, we experience war. I experience war. You see the people you see on TV running with mattresses and stuff. I was among those people. Amen. You, 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 you sometimes see these things on TV where you see uh, flies coming on the mouth of a baby, you know, malnutrition, anger. Those things exist and they are real. But I'm so surprised that I come in America, in the United States. It's called the best country in the world. But yet I see people coming to my car and say, please help me with a dollar. We were in New York City and we were buying stuff and a lot of people were just coming, please, I need a dollar. I said, Lord, how is this possible that people are in America and can be in this kind of situation? It's because they are captivity that must fall in the name of Jesus Christ. There are things that are not normal. You can't be in this country and fail. Oh, you're not saying amen. People in the United States don't realize how blessed they are how privileged they are. You are privileged. <laughs> oh, your amen is so weak. I say you are privileged. Pastor, we go in the restaurant and we have to wait for 30 minutes because people are just eating. It's called privilege. <laughs> How the people don't have a meal per day? And yet people complain. Look at your neighbor and say, stop complaining. <laughs> Begin to give praise to God. And learn to give. Giving will change your life. Giving will open doors. Giving will bring this church to another level. It's possible in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Bible says, They that sows in fear shall what? Reap in joy. Verse 6, it says, He that goes forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed shall doubtlessly come again with rejoicing bringing his sheaves with him so when you give and you give with your heart it must be painful it's okay because the flesh usually oppose what the spirit wants if the spirit wants you to fast for three days the next morning you wake up you're already hungry like you're about to die because the flesh is opposing hallelujah Say, no, 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 no. That's not the will of God. Listen to me. We refuse to be obedient to the flesh. Because the Lord wants to do something new in this church. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord wants to open your finances. He wants to bring you to the next level. I was here and I looked and I said, Lord, I see uh, that the church is raising money to buy a building. I want us to do an offering for this course. The building. Not for Pastor Silver. The building. How many people agree with me? Oh yes. I feel it in my spirit. If the ashes can help. You have a thousand dollars. Two thousand dollars. Whatever you have. By the way, giving should be freely. Right? I'm not trying to, <laughs> you know, you give what you have according to your means. But if you have more, can we do something for this? Last night in a vision, and I remember, the Lord told me to consecrate this place because this is an altar of God so pastor by your permission I will need some olive oil and if the ashes can help us with the envelopes for the cause of the building and then we are going to finish here very soon amen and while we are getting 
ready for that. I want to encourage the church to give for the cause of the building. I'll just pour a little bit here. Is that okay? Church, can we stand up? Just stretch your hands. Maybe you may not understand what I'm doing right now. I'm a prophetic man. Next year is the 40th anniversary. This year is the 40th, 40th anniversary. Next year. Men of God, I want to come back here next year. And we don't have space in this church. Jesus can do it. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so I want to just put a little bit of this anointing oil here on the altar. Father, like you asked me to do, I dedicate this altar to you. Open heaven in this place, Lord. Open heaven upon this church. Father, I call a Bethel anointing in this place. Where angel will ascend and descend. In the name of Jesus Christ. This place shall be a place where you will change names. In the name of Jesus Christ. Bible says when you met with Jacob you changed his name to Israel when you met Abraham you changed his name from Abraham to Abraham Amen. every time when you meet someone oh God you change their names Amen. father I have come to change the names of the situations of people in this church in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. you met with a woman of issue of blood and you change her situations Father, she was separated from people. But when she touched the hem of your garment, the Bible says, oh God, she received a healing. Her name changed. Lift up your hands, everybody. 